You know that feeling when you are at a certain point in your life and you say, I wish I'd known all that before, before I started all this or before I did all this. You know, and yeah, this video is about it. Here are 10 things that I wish I'd known before when I started playing guitar. Number one is have the right attitude. When you're starting a new hobby or learning a new instrument, you should really have the right attitude and the right mindset. Learning something new takes time and takes a lot of practice. So what I really mean with this is Rome hasn't been built in a day. There are a lot of very talented guitar players in the world and, and very few of them are so talented that they never have to take lessons or they can do everything on their own and they are amazing at what they do, They're like the Mozart of the guitar players. If you are like that, lucky you. But if you are like me and you have to put a little bit more effort to really master your instrument, then you should really realize that you always have to push through and sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. Second one is, learn to play with a click track or a metronome. Early, in the early days when home recording was not that easy to get by or, or, or get the right equipment to do recordings at home, studio time was very, very expensive. So you had to make most of your time and take the least stakes possible. But now, with the current technology that's available, you can buy a very cheap recording interface and you can start, you can use a plugin and you can start recording your own tracks very easily with low effort. No problem whatsoever. But the only thing that you have to bear in mind is you have to get your rhythm as tight as possible on the click or on the metronome. Because even though you think your playing is tight, because when you want to send your tracks for mixing to a sound engineer or to a mastering engineer, if it's not tight enough, he will tell you to re-record everything again. No mercy. As Glenn Fricker from Spectre Media Group, he will tell you the same thing. Third, get the best gear your money can get. What do I mean with this? You don't have to rob the bank or, or have the most expensive guitars available. No, you just have to have a good amplifier or a good recording interface with a good plugin that does not mask the mistakes that you are making, especially when you're playing with high gain. Why do I tell you this? Because I made the same mistake. I started out with the Lion 6 Spider 2 because I saw that particular amplifier at a music school where I took guitar lessons and at that time it sounded great, it sounded awesome, it was cheap and, and I bought the amp for budget reasons, I wanted to have everything all together. It was not too expensive, it sounded awesome and at that time I did not realize what a piece of crap that amplifier really was. I used the insane settings as every Spider user did in the beginning I tried to play Metallica, Machine and all the other th bands that I used to listen to but it just didn't sound that good and later on I realized it made my playing sloppy. I did not hear my mistakes and I really have to thank one of my friends for that one when he first entered the rehearsing space of one of my previous bands. He just blatantly told me, hey, are you the guitar player? Yeah. Is that your amplifier? Yeah, well, it's a piece of shit, you should buy a tube amp. And you know what? I'm still grateful that he told me that until this very day. No joking. No, because a good guitar amplifier or a good recording interface and a good guitar is actually like a microscope. It's like a magnifying glass. When you make a mistake, you will hear it immediately and you can correct it. And you can learn a good habit instead of a bad habit. Number four, get a good teacher or a source of feedback. Especially when you're learning new techniques and you want to perfect yourself, it's always good to have a good teacher, a trainer, a mentor, or what have you. At least somebody tells you that you make a mistake, like the guy that I mentioned in the, in the previous part that I'm... Number five, buy the right pick for your playing style. I will make a special video about this later on, about the different sound of different shapes and different materials of picks, but you should get 
the best pick that matches your playing style. I started out with Dunlop match picks of 1mm nylon or just the standard nylon picks that you can get in any music store available. So later on I moved to Dunlop Black Fangs by Hatfield because I was, uh, yeah, I'm a big Metallica fan and a big Hatfield fan. And now I'm using Minspear picks because these match my playing style better and give me a better stability and a tighter rhythm. But I will, I will tell you more about it in, in a future video. Number six, you can tie this one together with the first part. It's practice, practice, practice. Every time that you have the chance, practice. Even if it's only 15 minutes a day, you will see in the beginning, the progress will be slow. Maybe it can be frustrating, but later on it will pay off. It's like anything, it's like any sport or any new hobby or any instrument that you want to learn. Train yourself, you'll build muscle memory and things will go faster and easier and better as you move along. Number seven, get the right guitar strings. When you experiment a little bit with guitar tuning, so when you tune up and down, your strings will wear out faster than they should. At least when I started out in my only electric guitar that I got, I tended to switch tunings between drop C, E standard, drop D, even going down to B to play Slipknot or drop B at least. I mean, at every one point in time, my strings would always break because of that extra wear and tear. So if you play with different tunings, I suggest you get at least a second guitar, either as a backup or with different strings, because you will always get better results and a better sound if your guitar is perfectly set up for that tuning and that kind of play that you will have. So number eight and number nine are actually the same if I think about this now. So I'm kind of cheating. So I will combine eight and nine together. You should always do your own thing, firstly, and you should find out what works best for you. Why do I tell you this? Because this one is a very special one for me, a very close one to my heart, as a matter of fact. If you go on forums, you will always find mixed opinions and opinions are good. Opinions are, in my opinion, what people think, what people think is right according to them so my opinion might be a bit controversial in this one I'm, I'm just sometimes just fed up with with what guys say about certain types of guitars or, or, or about certain types of pickups if you want to play metal with the Fender Telecaster type of guitar just do it go ahead experiment because if it hasn't been done before you could be the first one you could be a pioneer but it's been done before, that I have to tell you. No, Slipknot plays with a Telecaster. Yeah, Gojira that play with a Telecaster type of guitar. Nah, I will get some comments about that one in the comment section most surely. But what I really mean with this is just find your own tone, find your own sound. I play with EMG pickups and until a certain point in time, EMG pickups were the best you could get. Everybody would say, yo, get a guitar with EMG pickups, get a Mesa Boogie Duo Rectifier, and you will have the sound of the 90s. You will have the sound that you would really like. You would have the sound of Metallica. You would have the sound of any other guitar player that's in the world that play, that play metal seriously, you know? And now if you go on the forums, people are saying, nah, you should not buy EMG pickups. You should buy Fishman Flumens or whatever. I mean, okay, if you like those pickups, if that's what you want to have for your tone, buy them. Do your own thing and dare to be different. I mean, that's what I do. I still play with EMG pickups. My main guitars are equipped with EMG pickups. And you know why? I like the sound. That's what I'm looking for. Combined with my Blackstar amplifier and my overdrive pedal. In this case, is this one number 10 or number 9? I'm not sure. Let's call it number 9. It, because I combine 8 and 9 together. Everybody makes mistakes and everybody can have a very bad day. So if you play live, if you play, if you play a gig, don't worry too much about the mistake that you make. I've seen the biggest fail. I've seen the biggest guitar players fail. There are even jokes that Kirk Hammett makes a mistake in every single show that they play okay I've seen Michael Schenker freaking out on stage because his guitar 
failed completely. He lost his signal mid solo. I've seen Michael Ockerfeld have the same thing that occurred to him. Mid in the middle of a set, sound was gone. Number 10 or 11 or the bonus. I forgot, doesn't matter. This one is, is also one of the reasons why I made this video. You know, go on YouTube, go on the internet. When I started playing guitar 18 years ago, YouTube was not as advanced as it is right now. And it was Corey Taylor who told the audience at Grass Pop Metal Meeting when he was playing there with Stone Sour, like, do you guys know YouTube? You should go there to check our latest video called 303150. So I went there and I've been watching YouTube ever since. That's also the reason why I started my own YouTube channel as well, because I have some things that I want to teach you all. So this is also my advice. Go on YouTube. I might make a video later on about my favorite YouTube channels, where I learn the most things. I can cite some of them already. Uh, ben Eller, Circle of Tone, Spectre Media Group, Ola England. So yeah, go ahead. Look for as much information as you can and do your own thing with it. So that's all for me today. If you have further questions, put them down in the comment section. And if you want to support my channel, click the subscribe link below. Also, click the bell to be notified when I upload a new video, which will be every week on Friday. And if you have any other suggestion, you can tell me if you meet me in real life or find me on social media. I was Sven, and this was The Metal Foundry. See you next week.